There will be four free response questions on the AP Precalculus exam. This video is modeled after FRQ1. It's primarily about composition, zeros, limits, and model selection. Let's pretend it's from the 2003 AP Precalculus exam. If you appreciate the content, please give it a like. Let f be an increasing function defined for x greater than zero. The table gives values for f of x at selected values of x. The function g is given by g of x equals 4.1 minus 2 times e to the x minus 6 power. A part 1. The function h is defined by h of x is equal to g of f of x. This notation is equivalent to this notation. Find the value of h at 3 as a decimal approximation or indicate that it is not defined. h at 3 means plugging in 3 for x. So h at 3 will equal g at f at 3. Working from the inside out, let's see if we can find the value of f at 3. Looking at the table, f at 3 is 10. So this becomes g at 10. This problem is calculator active. So let's use the graphing calculator to evaluate g at 10. Begin by entering g as y1 on the calculator. Always reset your calculator at the beginning of an assessment by hitting second plus seven one two. That's second plus seven one two. Now hit y equals and enter g of x into y1. Once you've typed it in, it should look like this. We'd like to evaluate g at 10. That means on the calculator, we need to evaluate y1 at 10. Quit out of this by hitting second, quit. And we can make y1 show up by hitting alpha, trace, and then enter. We can evaluate y1 at 10 by putting 10 inside of parentheses next to y1 and hitting enter. The College Board will accept three decimal places, however, Students often attempt to round to three decimal places, and they lose a point for rounding wrong. So my strong recommendation is always use four decimal places and never try to round. So let's record negative 105.0963. And that's it for A part one. A part two. Find the value of f inverse at 30, or indicate that it is not defined. To evaluate f inverse at 30, you should be thinking f at what is equal to 30. Looking at the chart, f at 12 is equal to 30, so the value of f inverse at 30 is 12. You don't need to show any work, and you don't need to put anything in front of the 12. You can just put 12. B part 1. Find all values of x as decimal approximations for which g of x equals 1, or indicate that there are no such values. Since we entered g of x as y1 on the calculator, we can find where g of x equals 1 by finding where y1 is equal to 1. Go back to the y equals section of your calculator. We can find where y1 is equal to 1 by finding the intersection between y1 and the line y equals 1. So let's let y2 equal 1. And now we just need to find the intersection between y1 and y2. Let's just hit graph and see what we've got. Actually, I should mention, if you reset your calculator like I told you to, um, the window was automatically set to uh, the interval from negative 10 to positive 10, x and y. So uh, if you did not reset your calculator, then you should adjust the window to, to these values to match what I'm doing. So I hit graph and I see this. 
and this is the intersection point we are looking for. We can find this value by doing second trace and choosing option five for intersect. You can just hit the button number five. Move the pointer close to the point of intersection. Like so. Overshoot, go back, and then hit enter three times. Enter, enter, enter. And there it is, 6.4382. That's it for B part one. B part two, determine the end behavior of G as X decreases without bound. Express your answer using the mathematical notation of a limit. So we are doing the limit as X approaches. As X decreases without bound, X approaches negative infinity. Next, don't forget to put G of X. So we have the limit as X approaches negative infinity of G of X. To find the value of this limit, we need to consider the graph and ask ourselves what's happening to the value of g as x approaches negative infinity. In other words, as we go to the left, is g increasing without bound, which would be a limit of positive infinity? Is g decreasing without bound, which would be a limit of negative infinity? Or is g approaching some type of an asymptote? You know, maybe it's leveling out like this, and in that case, whatever this uh, asymptote value would be, that would be the limit. It might be a number like one or zero or five. Back in unit two, we memorized that the parent function y equals e to the x looks like this. It's an exponential function. Multiplying by negative two in the front causes a vertical dilation by a factor of two which doesn't really affect the look of the graph much, but more importantly, it causes a reflection over the x-axis. So the graph is now upside down compared to the parent function. Notice that the parent function and this transformation have the x-axis as a horizontal asymptote. Both graphs are approaching the x-axis as x approaches negative infinity. Subtracting six from the x value is a horizontal translation to the right by six. But because this graph is infinite horizontally, shifting the graph to the right by six does not change the look of the graph very much. So I'm going to basically ignore that. The final transformation is this uh, positive 4.1. Having this in the front like this is the same as adding 4.1 on the end like this. This is a vertical translation of 4.1. So the entire graph moves up by 4.1, including the horizontal asymptote, which goes from y equals zero to y equals 4.1. Therefore, as x approaches negative infinity, g of x approaches 4.1, and that is the limit. Just for fun, let's confirm this by looking at the graph. In fact, let's go back to y equals, and let's make y2 y equals 4.1, and hit graph. So yes, we can see that g of x seems to approach and level out at 4.1. That's why it disappears into the line y equals 4.1 on the left. C part one. Use the table of values of f of x to determine if f is best modeled by a linear, quadratic, exponential, or logarithmic function. We have learned that f of x is best modeled by a linear function if the output values change additively over equal length input value intervals. Or you could say a linear model is best if the first differences are equal over equal length input value intervals. However, looking at the table, we see that we do not have equal length input value intervals. The input values go up by three, and then six, and then 12, and then 24. Since we don't have equal length input value intervals, a linear model will not be best. We have learned that a quadratic model is best 
if the second differences are equal over equal length input value intervals. But again, we do not have equal length input value intervals, so a quadratic model will not be best either. We have learned that an exponential model will be best if the output values change multiplicatively, say it with me, over equal length input value intervals. So guess what? Since we don't have equal length input value intervals, we will not choose exponential either. Finally, we have learned that a logarithmic model is best if the input values change multiplicatively over equal length output value intervals. Notice that this is the reverse of what we said for exponential. Each input value is two times the previous input value, so the input values do change multiplicatively. At the same time, the output values are increasing by 10, so we do have equal length output value intervals. In C part one, we simply say that a logarithmic model is best, and you could just write the word logarithmic here if you wanted to, but in C part two, we give a reason for our answer based on the relationship between the change in the output values of f and the change in the input values of f. A logarithmic model is best because the input values of f of x change multiplicatively over equal length output value intervals. Make sure you say of f of x right here. You will not earn the point without it. Also, if you prefer, you can use the word proportionally instead of multiplicatively. So, a logarithmic model is best because the input values of f of x change proportionally over equal length output value intervals. Hey guys, don't forget to like and subscribe, but also if you found this video helpful, there's a lot more where that came from. You can click the upper link, which will take you to the whole unit playlist, or you can click the lower link, which will take you to the next video in the playlist. See you there.